Hello everyone, it's Rigi Rob here, and today I am playing 100% Perfect Girl. Now this is a visual novel made by Studio Peridolia, I believe I've got that name correct. And it features pixel art, and it's all about seeing the 100% Perfect Girl on a beautiful April morning. Story written by Haruki Murakami. And I'm really interested to see what this is like, so let's get into it, shall we? To tell you the truth, she's not that good looking. That's a weird way to start off. She doesn't stand out in any way. Her clothes are nothing special. The back of her hair is still bent out of shape from sleep. She isn't young, must be near 30, not even close to a girl. But still, I know from 50 yards away, she's the 100% perfect girl for me. The moment I see her, there's a rumbling in my chest, and my mouth is as dry as the desert. Maybe you have your own particular favorite type of girl. One with slim ankles, ooh, that's a risque pixel art shot there. Or big eyes. Or graceful fingers. Or you're drawn for no good reason to girls who take their time with every meal. Yeah, that's a weird fascination, but sure. I have my own preferences, of course. Sometimes in a restaurant, I'll catch myself staring at the girl at the next table to mine, because I like the shape of her nose. But no one can insist that this 100% perfect girl corresponds to some preconceived type. Much as I like noses, I can't recall the shape of hers. Or even if she had one. Well, I think you'd notice if she didn't have one, but sure. All I can remember for sure is that she was no great beauty. It's weird. It is weird, yeah. I told someone, yesterday on the street, I passed the 100% perfect girl. Yeah? Good looking? Not really. Your favourite type then? I don't know. I can't seem to remember anything about her. The shape of her eyes or the size of her breasts. <laughs> yeah, if that's, yeah. Guys generally tend to remember that. <laughs> Strange. Yeah, strange. So anyhow, what did you do? Talk to her? Follow her? Nah, just passed her on the street. She's walking east to west, and I west to east. It's a really nice April morning. I wish I could talk to her. Half an hour would be plenty. I'd just ask her about herself, tell her about herself, tell her about myself, and what I'd really like to do. I'd explain to her the complexities of fate that have led to our passing each other on a side street. This was something sure to be crammed full of warm secrets, like an antique clock built when the peace filled the world. It's a nice image there. After talking, we'd have lunch somewhere. See a Woody Allen movie? Uh, it's not the, okay, that's a weird choice, but sure. Stop by a hotel bar for cocktails. With any kind of luck, we might end up in bed. Oh, you think you're pushing it there, mate. Jumping the gun. Potentiality knocks on the door of my heart. Now, the distance between us is now to 15 yards. How can I approach her? What should I say? Good morning, miss. Do you think you could spare half an hour for a little conversation? Ridiculous. That sounds like an insurance salesman. Pardon me. Would you happen to know if there's an all-night cleaners in the neighbourhood? No, this is just as ridiculous. I'm not carrying any laundry, for one thing. Who's going to buy a line like that? Maybe the simple truth would do. Good morning. You are the 100% perfect girl for me. No, I shouldn't believe it. Or even if she did, she not, might not want to talk to me. Yeah, you can see all the anxieties being represented there. No, no, idiot, moron. Sorry, I might be the 100% perfect girl for you, but you're not the 100% perfect boy for me. It could happen. And if I found myself in that situation, I'd probably go to pieces. I'd never recover from the shock. I'm 32, and that's what growing older is all about. We pass in front of a flower shop. A small, warm air mass touches my skin. The asphalt is damp, and I catch the scent of roses. I can't bring myself to speak to her. She wears a white dress, and in her right hand she holds a crisp white envelope lacking only a stamp. So, she's written somebody a letter. Maybe she spent the whole night writing, to judge from the sleepy look in her eyes. The envelope could contain every secret she's ever had. I take a few more strides and turn, she's lost in the crowd. Now, of course, I know exactly what I should have said to her. It would have been a long speech, though far too long for me to have delivered it properly. The ideas I come up with are never very practical. Oh well. It would have started once upon a time and ended a sad story, don't you think? Once upon a time, there lived a boy and a girl. The boy was 18 and the girl 16. He was not unusually handsome, and she was not especially beautiful. They were just an ordinary lonely boy and an ordinary lonely girl, like all the others. 
But they believed with their whole hearts that somewhere in the world they lived the 100% perfect boy and the 100% perfect girl for them. Yes, they believed in a miracle. And that miracle actually happened. One day, the two came upon each other on the corner of a street. This is amazing! I've been looking for you all my life! You may not believe this, but you're the 100% perfect girl for me. And you are the 100% perfect boy for me, exactly as I picture you in every detail. It's like a dream. They sat on a park bench, held hands, and told each other their stories hour after hour. They were not lonely anymore. They had found and been found by their 100% perfect other. What a wonderful thing it is to find and be found by your 100% perfect other. It's a miracle, a cosmic miracle. As they sat and talked, however, a tiny, tiny sliver of doubt took root in their hearts. Was it really alright for one's dream to come true so easily? And so, when there came a momentary lull in the conversation, the boy said to the girl, Let's test ourselves, just once. If we really are each other's 100% perfect lovers, then sometime, somewhere, we will meet again without fail. And when that happens, and we know that we were 100% perfect ones, we'll marry then and there. And... It's a weird way of going about testing 100% perfect love, but sure. What do you think? Yes, that is exactly what we should do. And so they parted, she to the east and he to the west. The test they had agreed upon, however, was utterly unnecessary. <laughs> they should never have undertaken it, because they really and truly were each other's 100% perfect lovers. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was a miracle that they had ever met. But it was impossible for them to know this, young as they were. The cold, indifferent waves of fate proceeded to toss them unmercifully. One winter, both the boy and the girl came down with the season terrible influenza, and after drifting for weeks between life and death, they lost all memory of their earlier years. When they awoke, their heads were as empty as the young D.H. Lawrence's piggy bank. They were two bright, determined young people, however, and through their unremitting efforts they were able to acquire once again the knowledge and feeling that qualified them to return as full-fledged members of society. Heaven be praised, they became truly upstanding citizens who knew who know how to transfer from one subway line to another, who are fully capable of sending a special delivery letter from, at the post office. Indeed, they even experienced love again, sometimes as much as 75% or even 85% love. Time passed with shocking swiftness, and soon the boy was 32, the girl 30. One beautiful April morning, in search of a cup of coffee to start the day, the boy was walking from west to east while the girl, intending to send a special delivery letter, was working from east to west, but along the same narrow street in the Harajuku neighbourhood of Tokyo. Tokyo? Tokyo. Pretty sure that's supposed to be Tokyo. Anyway. They passed each other in the very centre of the street. The faintest gleam of their lost memories glimmered for the briefest moments in their hearts. Each felt a rumbling in their chest. And they knew. She is the 100% perfect girl for me. He is the 100% perfect boy for me. But the glow of their memories was far too weak, and their thoughts no longer had the clarity of 14 years earlier. Without a word, they passed each other, disappearing into the crowd, forever. A sad story, don't you think? Yes, that's it. That's what I should have said to her. Nice! That is a great story, I loved that. So, well done Haruki Marakami, I hope I've got that right. And well done Justin Yun for doing the art, music and programming. Yeah, I really like that. That was really good. Whew. Well, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more like this, uh, what's on seeing the 100% girl one beautiful April morning, got that correct title now, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking on our logo in the middle of the screen here. And I'll see you all next time.